Welcome back to Haunt Narratives. Uh, tonight we're going to be uh, dimming the lights and diving deep into the world of Art the Clown. Ooh. This isn't your typical slasher villain, right. and uh, there's something uniquely unsettling about him yeah. that has audiences hooked. So get ready, because we're going behind the mask, Okay. and uh, we're going to be exploring the creation of Art the Clown. Okay. From those early short films to his breakout role in Terrifier. Cool. Trust me, you are going to want to sleep with the lights on after this. You know what really strikes me about Art the Clown is how he just seems to tap into a specific kind of fear that's very prevalent in the 2020s. Mm. It's this uh, this sense of desensitization, you know, like yeah. this feeling of being bombarded with just so much violence right, and yeah. chaos online that it almost becomes numbing. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like we're constantly scrolling through news feeds right. filled with, uh, you know, horrific events Shocking videos, dark memes. Exactly. It's almost like we've become immune to the shock value yeah, of it all. Yeah, exactly. And that's where art comes in. His ultraviolence, his grotesque antics. Right. It's like he's pushing the boundaries of what we consider disturbing. He's a reflection of that desensitized internet culture. Yeah. A manifestation of our darkest, most morbid curiosities. And what's interesting is that terrifier the film that really launched art yes. into the horror stratosphere yeah. seems to embrace that over-the-top, in-your-face style of horror. It does. It's a far cry from the more subtle psychological horror yes. we've seen in recent years. Absolutely. Terrifier is a throwback to the grindhouse films of the 70s and 80s, those gritty, low-budget movies that just reveled in gore and shock value. Yeah. It's a deliberate choice by Damien Leone, the film's creator, mm. to create something visceral, something that gets under your skin and stays with you like long it. after you've seen it. Speaking of Damien Leone, I find it fascinating how he managed to bring art the clown to life with such limited resources. Yeah. I mean, the first Terrifier film was made on a shoestring budget, right? Right. It's a true testament to independent filmmaking. Yeah. Terrifier actually started as a series of short films that Leone created, mm. showcasing this creepy, silent clown character, but getting a feature film off the ground proved to be a challenge. I can imagine. Yeah. Independent horror films often struggle to find funding. Yeah. Especially when they're pushing the boundaries of what's considered acceptable. So how did Leone finally manage to get Terrifier made? Well, he eventually found a champion in producer Phil Falcone, right. who recognized the potential in Leone's vision right. and helped secure the funding needed to bring Art the Clown to the big screen. It's amazing how a low-budget film like that, with its limited resources, right. managed to become such a cult classic and spawn a whole franchise. It really speaks to the power of a compelling character yeah. and a filmmaker's unwavering passion right. to bring their vision to life, even in the face of adversity. And speaking of bringing art to life, there's yep. a pretty interesting story behind the casting yeah. of the character. I remember reading that art was originally played by a different actor. Yes. In those early short films. You're right. The original art, The Clown, was played by Mike Cinelli. Okay. However, Ginelli decided to retire from acting. Oh, wow. This unexpected turn of events led to the casting of David Howard Thornton. Okay. A talented clown and comedic actor. That's a pretty big change to make, especially when you consider that art doesn't speak. Right. His entire performance relies on physicality, yeah. facial expressions, and this unsettling, almost otherworldly presence. And that's where Thornton really shines. He brings a unique physicality to the role. Using his background in clowning and physical comedy to create a character that's both terrifying and strangely mesmerizing. It's a performance that relies heavily on nonverbal communication. Right. And Thornton absolutely nails it. And it's not just Thornton's performance that sets art apart. There's a deliberate choice in Terrifier to make him visually distinct from other horror clowns, especially Pennywise from IT. Oh, absolutely. Art's design is so striking. That stark black and white makeup, the blood red smile, and the almost childlike costume, it creates this unsettling juxtaposition of innocence and pure evil. It's a brilliant visual choice that plays on our primal fears. We associate clowns with joy laughter childhood. But art takes that familiar image and twists it into something truly horrific. It's like a nightmare version of children's party clown. And then there's the fact that he doesn't speak. That silence is just so unnerving. You can't reason with him. You can't understand his motivations. He's a complete enigma. That silence adds to his otherworldly quality. It makes him feel like something that exists outside the realm of human understanding, which is a truly terrifying concept. 
It's like he's operating on a different level, driven by some dark primal instinct that we can't even comprehend. Mm -hmm. And the way Damien Leone directs the violence in Terrifier is so deliberate, so over the top. It's like he's creating this grotesque ballet of blood and guts. There's a certain theatricality to art's violence, wouldn't you say? It's not just mindless brutality. There's a sense of showmanship of performance that makes it even more disturbing. It's like he's putting on a show for his victims, reveling in their fear and suffering. And what makes it even more unsettling is that sometimes, amidst all that horror, there are these moments of dark, almost absurd humor. It's a brilliant tactic, really. Those moments of unexpected humor create this jarring contrast that keeps the audience off balance. You're laughing one minute and then recoiling in horror the next. It's like he's playing with our emotions, toying with our expectations. And it speaks to this idea that we were discussing earlier about desensitization. It's like he's acknowledging the absurdity of it all, the over-the-top nature of the violence, and yet he's still able to shock and disturb us. Exactly. And you know, one of the things that makes art so fascinating as a horror icon is that he's not just a one-dimensional villain. He's a complex character full of contradictions. He's terrifying, yes, but there's also something strangely compelling about him. I agree. He's this embodiment of pure chaos and evil. But there's also a certain intelligence behind his actions, a twisted sense of humor that makes him almost endearing. Endearing might be pushing it, but I understand what you mean. There's a certain magnetism to him, a charisma that draws you in even as you're repelled by his actions. It's like he's this dark mirror reflecting our own fascination with macabre, mm -hmm. our own morbid curiosity. He forces us to confront the darkness within ourselves, the parts of us that are drawn to the forbidden, to the things that scare us the most. And that, I think, is what makes Art the Clown such a powerful and enduring horror icon. He taps into something primal, something deep within our collective psyche, something that resonates with us on a visceral level. It's interesting to think about how Art the Clown has achieved this level of notoriety, you know, right. without ever uttering a word. It really is a testament to the power of visual storytelling. His every gesture, every facial expression, every detail of his appearance just speaks volumes. It's like he's communicating on a purely instinctual level, tapping into those primal fears and fascinations. And... He's done it all without the backing of a major studio or a massive marketing campaign. He's become this underground phenomenon, a cult icon, embraced by horror fans who are looking for something different, something truly unsettling. Yeah, he's a reminder that horror can thrive outside the mainstream, That's that it. it can still surprise us and challenge us. There's a raw, untamed quality to Art the Clown that you don't often find right. in more polished studio-produced horror films. It's almost like he's a throwback to a time when horror was more transgressive, more willing to push boundaries and explore taboo subjects. And it's that willingness to go further, to delve into the darkest corners of the human psyche that has made him such a captivating figure for horror fans. He's a character that lingers in your mind long after the credits have rolled, a disturbing presence that haunts your thoughts, and that's the mark of a truly effective horror villain. He's become a symbol of our anxieties, our fears, and perhaps even our morbid curiosities. Art the Clown might be silent, but his message is loud and clear. Horror is alive and well, and it's still capable of shocking us, disturbing us, and captivating us in ways we never thought possible. Art the Clown is a reminder that sometimes the most terrifying monsters are the ones that reflect our own inner darkness. Thank you for joining us for this chilling exploration into the gruesome world of Art the Clown. If you enjoyed this deep dive into haunt narratives, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and comment.